everyone so I'm going to read for us today a little piece from um, Eva Ibbotson's journey to the river sea um, this is a really great adventure story it's about a girl called Maya um, who is asked to go to the Brazilian jungle um, with her um, governess her nanny and she has to live with her only relatives who are left some cousins um, and it's not quite as she expects it would be when she gets there. The cousins aren't perhaps as nice as she was hoping. And on this particular occasion, they've gone to the theatre to see a play and they've left her behind. Um, so she goes off and has a bit of an explore by herself and ends up having her own adventure to try and get to the theatre to join them. Chapter 5 I know exactly what Cinderella felt like, said Maya to Miss Minton. It was the night before the twins and Mrs Carter were going to Man Manaus to see the opening of Little Lord Fauntroy. They had bought dresses at Fleurette's, white and frilled, with curly pink embroidery, so that they looked rather like wedding cakes. The little maid, Tappy's sister, had been sent back three times to steam the laundry and to iron the flounces to perfection. Hair ribbons were chosen and tossed to one side. Bracelets slipped on and off. We need some proper jewellery, said Beatrice crossly. Maya could lend me to her mother's pearls. And what about me, complained Gwendoline. I'm not going to sit there while you wear Maya's pair of pearls and not me. They weren't satisfied with the way their white shoes had been cleaned. They wriggled and complained as the hot curling tongs crinked their ringlets into shape. In the morning, as the boat waited, it was even worse. Where's my purse? Maya, you find it. It was on my bed. We must have some scent, Mamma. Proper scent, not lavender water. That's for babies. As Maya helped them, she felt completely unreal. She was so certain that at the last minute Mrs Carter would relent and let her at least come to Manaus with them. I know I can't come to the play, but I could wait and see Clovis afterwards, she had begged. So Clovis is um, a character who is in the play and Maya met him on the boat when she was travelling from England to um, Brazil to live with her um, cousins and their mum, Mrs Carter. Now, Maya, don't be foolish, as though I would allow you to hang about the theatre like a common beggar. But at last the girl's hair was safely netted against the breeze, and the maids, looking as sullen as Maya had ever seen them, fetched their shoe bags and their cloaks. As the boat drew away, Tappy, standing beside Maya, said clearly, As pestianus. Maya looked at her, startled. She must have heard wrong, but when she looked the words up in the dictionary, they meant what she had thought they meant. Pigs, Tappy had called the twins. Nasty little pigs. It was very quiet when the noise of the boat had died away and Maya could no longer try to hide her misery. It's not the end of the world, Miss Minton had said the night before. We'll have a good day exploring. They can't lock us in the house. But when Maya went to find her, she found the governess still in her room, sitting in her one upright chair. She was very pale and her eyes were closed. I'm just coming. I've got a little headache, but it will be gone in a minute. No, you haven't, said Maya. You've got a proper migraine. My mother had them, and they're awful. You'll have to just lie down until they're over. Have you got aspirin? Yes, but there's no need to make a fuss. But when Miss Minton tried to get up, there was a blind look in her eyes, and she gave up and let Maya turn down the bed. I'll be fine, said Maya. I'll go and read on the veranda. But though the book was David Copperfield, and she got to the part where Betsy Trotwood was chasing the donkeys out of her garden, she couldn't concentrate. She kept seeing Clovis's face and hearing him say, You will come, Maya, won't you? You will be there. After a while, she went along to Minty's room and very quietly opened the door. Miss Minton was fast asleep in the darkened room and Maya knew she would not wake for a long time. She went into her own room. On her work table was the map she had got from Mr Carter. She picked it up and studied it. She had managed to push back the heavy bolt on the door to the compound at the back several days ago. According to the map, there was a path running from the back of the house along the water channels, which eventually came out behind the docks in Manaus. The channels themselves were as tangled as boa constrictors, but if she kept the sun on her right, today there really was some sun, 
not only the dark rain that fell so often. It was only 10 o'clock. The play didn't begin until 2 o'clock. Even if it took her a long time, she should still get there and at least she would have tried. She changed into her walking shoes and buttoned her purse into the pocket of her dress. Then slowly, carefully, she pulled back the bolt. She had looked at the Indian huts so often from her window that it was strange to be walking past them. The little rootling pig was there, tethered, and a few chickens, but the Indians were all away working in the forest or the house. The beginning of the path was exactly where it should have been, with a narrow plank over the stream followed. With a narrow plank over the stream it followed. Maya plunged into the forest. Away from the compound, the great trees grew more thickly. Dappled creepers wound round the trunks, searching for the light. A scarlet orchid, hanging from a branch, glowed like a jewel in a shaft of sun. Oh, but it's beautiful, she said aloud, and drew the damp, earthy, slightly rotten smell into her lungs. But it was a mistake to be so rapt about the beauty of nature, because the path was not quite as simple as it appeared on the map. She knew she had to keep the sun on her right, but the sun could not be relied upon. Sometimes the canopy of leaves was so dense that she seemed to be walking in twilight, and the streams kept branching. She stayed beside the widest of them, but the path made by the rubber gatherers was overgrown. She stumbled over roots of trees, trod on strange fungi, orange and mauve. Sometimes a smaller stream cut across her path, and she had to jump it or paddle. Once, something ran through the trees ahead of her, a grey, snuffling creature. She couldn't have told the exact moment at which she knew she was lost. First there was just doubt, as she took one path rather than another. Then doubt became fear, and fear became panic, and she had to take deep breaths to stop herself from crying out. At the same time, the clouds began to cover the sun. Even those rays of light she had had to steer by had gone. They're right, the BC Carters, the jungle is our enemy, she thought. Why didn't I listen? She would have done anything to be back in the gloomy bungalow, eating tinned beetroot and being glared at by the twins. Trying to pull herself together, she walked faster. The stream she was following was quite big, a river really, and the current was fast. It must lead to Manus. Blinking away tears, she trudged on. Then her foot caught in the liana, a long branch hanging like a rope from the top of a tree, and she fell. It was a heavy fall, her foot was trapped, and in putting out her hand to save herself, she had clutched a branch of thorns. Furious with herself, hurt, lost, she lay for a few moments helpless. When she sat up again, something strange had happened. The stream by which she had fallen disappeared behind her in a curtain of green, more than a curtain, a wall of reeds and creepers and half-submerged trees. Yet from this green barrier there had appeared a canoe, coming towards her silently, like a boat in a dream. The canoe was being pulled by an Indian boy who stood in the prow and was steering it in an unhurried, easy way, so that the water seemed scarcely to be disturbed. Maya watched for a moment, not quite believing what she saw. Then she stumbled to her feet. Please, can you help me, she shouted, stupidly in English, then desperately in her few words of Portuguese. The boy looked at her. He seemed surprised by her look of agitation. Then he brought the canoe silently alongside. Still, he did not speak. I have to get to Manaus, I have to, Maya said, and pointed to where she thought the city was. Manaus is there? The boy smiled, and suddenly he seemed just a boy of about her own age. Not a mysterious and possibly threatening stranger emerged from a green of cur curtain of green. He shook his head. Manaus, he said, and pointed in almost the opposite direction. She was utterly crestfallen. So much for her map, her understanding of the jungle, and her hand was bleeding. I have to get to Manaus. I promised a friend. Amigo, I have to, she repeated. What little Portuguese she had learned seemed to have gone from her. She could only look at him and entreat. The boy did not answer. He was dressed in the work clothes worn by the local Indians, a blue cotton shirt faded from washing and cotton trousers. But round his head he wore a broad band which partly covered his thick, coal black hair and a pattern of red zigzags was painted on his cheekbones. His skin was a light bronze and his eyes the same colour as Maya's own, 
a deep dark brown. For a moment he stood upright in the canoe thinking. Then he stretched his hand out and made a movement of his head which was unmistakable. She was to get into the canoe. Will you take me or will you? She did not know if he understood but her instinct was to trust him. As he pulled her into the canoe she winced and he looked down at her hand. Then he took out a big thorn embedded in her palm and she thanked him. Sit, he said in Portuguese. He took the pole and the boat moved with surprising speed down the river. As soon as that they were underway, she thought what an idiot she had been. He would hit her on the head, or worse, he would take her off to his tribe as a slave. Or worse, I am thinking like the carters, Maya told herself. The boy had stowed the pole now and was using the paddle. She moved to take the other one, but he shook his head, pointing to her injured hand. As he pulled on the paddle, she saw on the inside of his wrist a small red mark, like a four-leafed clover, a good luck sign, the mark of his tribe. But even this sign of his foreignness couldn't frighten her for long. He moved so gracefully, he was so quiet and companionable. She was an idiot to trust him, but she did. Thank you, she said, in English, in Portuguese. She even remembered the word for thank you in the Indian language that the servants spoke. I have to go to the theatre, the Theatre Amazonas. He nodded, and they glided on down the river. Sometimes they moved between lush green trees, which leant so far over the water that she felt as though they were travelling between the roots of the forest. Birds rose as they went past, scarlet ibis, white herons flapping in slow motion. As they took a side branch of the river, Maya cried out because the boy was steering between gigantic leaves from which piebald frogs flopped into the water. That's the Victoria Regia lily, isn't it? She said. I've read about it. It was difficult to believe that he did not understand her. He had such a listening face. Then, in an instant, the worst happened. The boy gave a wild shout, a shout of pure rage. He put down the paddle, threw himself on top of her, pressing her down against the floorboards of the boat and kept her there pinioned. She felt his breath on her cheek. Then he released her and pointed. They had passed underneath a wicked looking branch with spikes the size of knives. If he hadn't forced her down, Maya would have been knocked unconscious or even blinded. As he clambered back and picked up the paddle, he was still muttering furiously in his own language and glaring at her. Without deciphering a single word, she knew he was scolding her for her carelessness and trying to explain that one had to be alert the whole time in the jungle. Idiota, he said finally, and though Senor and Senor Oliveras in the phrase book had not used the word, Maya understood it well enough. She was very careful after that, keeping a proper lookout, but nothing could quite quell her delight in the beauty she saw about her. It was as though she was taking the journey she had imagined on the top of the library ladder the day she heard about her new life. Then the stream became wider, the current stronger, and she caught a glimpse of a low, colour-washed houses and heard a dog bark. Manaus, he said. He drew, her, he drew up to the bank and helped her out. She took out her purse, but he wouldn't take her money, nor would he listen to her thanks. Teatra Amazonas, he said, pointing straight ahead. He would go no further towards civilization. The boy watched her as she ran off. She looked back once and waved, but he had already turned the boat. He pulled swiftly back through the maze of waterways. When he reached the place where he had found Maya, he smiled and half shook his head. Then he set the canoe hard at the curtain of green and vanished into his secret world. So that's just one of the many adventures within the book, um, which are all set in the um, the jungle, the Amazon jungle in the rainforest. So um, it's a really, really interesting book. It's um, It makes you want to read on because there's some quite uh, exciting and dramatic things that happen. I won't tell you in case you want to read the book yourself, um, but it really does keep you interested all the way through. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this chapter and take care. I'll see you soon.